All right, so trying to learn the B twist. Honestly, this one was pretty tough for me. I got really lost in the beginning. I don't have good aerial awareness. It's probably why it took me so long to learn how to do a backflip as well, but I just didn't really know where I was going in the air. I don't know how to twist, so it just made it really tough to learn. You know, I started off doing these little 360s off of one leg, but I, I really didn't know what I was doing. You can tell that it just looks super goofy and awkward and I really pretty <laughs> I felt pretty self-conscious throughout this time trying to do the b-twist just because there's other people like watching me and look like I'm just twirling around like a dumbass but you know throughout my relatively short time learning how to do flips or tricks I've kind of become accustomed to other people staring at me doing goofy shit because I usually just train by myself you know, if you look like an idiot, it's whatever. You're never going to see these people again. And so what if they laugh, you know? You're just doing something that's fun to you, and it's something that you want to learn, right? So so after a while of not making any progress, really, I actually sprained my ankle, my left ankle a bit. It wasn't a bad one, but it was enough to kind of put me off for a while. So I just watched a whole bunch of B-Twist tutorials on YouTube. And then I found this good tip from Pasha, Pasha the Boss. His video, he's uh, doing a beginner B-twist is what I'm doing. It kind of teaches you how to bring your hip over your leg in the air. That way, when you do the B-twist, you can spin and turn your hip a little faster. Found that really helped me a bit with getting more aerial awareness. And then if the ankle sprain wasn't enough, I hyperextended my left elbow a bit. I accidentally slipped when I was uh, training in the grass and I landed on my arm when I was straight out. So that's why you see my left elbow wrapped up. And I decided I'd just probably do a different trick, focus on something else for a bit. And I was thinking about illusion twist because that involves kind of the B twist motion, but you're more vertical. And I really twisted over his side, so there's less chance of me landing on my elbow. This actually helped me a lot with understanding the B-twist motion more. Learning how to do the skip hook or the skip crescent kick, it really helped to bring my left hip over even more than before, which really helped me with the spin later on. And I never really actually learned how to do an illusion twist. You see, I kind of do a shitty one here, but... Eventually, I'll get back on that and clean it up and learn how to do a proper one. But for some reason, I was just still so scared to actually attempt to go for a full B-twist. I think it's just because when I sprained my ankle, yeah, my left ankle was really just weak after all of that non-training. So I decided to just practice a whole bunch of tricker aerials to try to get my uh, left foot to be stronger, get my kicking foot to be stronger as well. Finally, I decided to go for the beat twist. Here, I took this tip from JMAT. I'll link his video. He says to put something on the ground and kind of jump over it. And that kind of helped me with jumping over and actually pulling my hip over instead of just trying to do a vertical twist. So you see, I'm starting to slant a little bit. See that I kind of land one right here, you know, I'd, I'd count that. It's not fully horizontal, but I'd say that's a B-twist, right? Almost uh, twisted my ankle again, so I decided to stop this day. So I came back after a couple days rest, just trying it again. So you can see I have a real hard time lifting my back foot more in the air to get more of a horizontal motion and get some more height. I think that's more, mainly just bad mind-body connection, bad aerial awareness. I'm not used to the trick and there's still quite a bit of fear left in me so you know, I just can't really commit and put the full power in. But you see right there, that's probably the cleanest one I, I did so far. It's, it's pretty horizontal, I'd say I'd count that as a good B-twist. 
But yeah, it just takes me so many attempts. You see all these attempts, I still don't really have it where I can do it, you know, consistent. At this point, my back foot is getting pretty tired, so I can't really kick high up in the air anymore. I'm just trying to work on the landing a little bit better. I mean that's pretty much my B twist progression it's not really all that solid yet it doesn't really look that clean yet either but I'd say I count it as a B twist I'm just learning at my own pace I'm going pretty slow you know I started trying this in March and it's all the way August now so I obviously had some injuries during the meantime and it's pretty busy with school and work so I couldn't really go to an open gym and try it on the mats to get over the fear but you know, just go slow you get it eventually, same with how I learned how to do a backflip, just taking things slowly. I know I'm not going to be the next Shosei or something, so this is just all for fun and exercise for me. And for other people that are trying to learn how to do a B-twist, I think it really helps to learn how to do like maybe a skip crescent or even try to do an illusion twist because it's a little bit easier and less scary to try. And it does help you with learning to twist your hip over and I think that's what kind of eventually brought me to the B twist in the end. So there's a tip if you came here looking for a tip. Obviously don't copy me because I have no idea what I'm really doing. So with putting so much time into the B twist lately, my knees and my ankles are kind of dusted. I might just take a break from tricking or doing flips for a bit and focus more on calisthenics. So maybe I'll make another calisthenics video pretty soon. Other than that, man, I guess Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.